Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to Where the Road Rises with me, your host, Eileen Curlin Walsh. Today, we are going to take a sneak peek at a terrific event coming up in the fall, right here in your own backyard, and give you an opportunity to reserve a seat and save the debt. Jill Moss Stetson, owner of Skin Trust here in Pales Heights, and I will present some enchanted evening, Wednesday, October 17, 2018, in the beautiful fireside room of Trinity College, just as the campus is ablaze with the colors of fall. I will present on the healing law, show you how estate planning is more than protecting assets, loved ones and planning for the future, that it is about you, your unique story, your life savings, your values, beliefs and hopes for the future. I will also show you how precious your life story is and teach you to leave it as a gift for those coming after. Jill Moss Stetson will help you imagine the possibilities through image renewal. Jill's presentation will include style tips, wardrobe must-haves, skin care, youthful aging, and a little history too. We will have guest speakers presenting little vignettes on eating and moving healthily, choosing outfits for each season, hair care, managing finances, capturing a great portrait, and archiving your family photos. We will also serve delicious refreshments. All you have to do is bring a donation to Stuffed Love, an inspiring charity we support that brings comfort to children after heart surgery and your lovely selves. You belong in our enchanted evening. We will show you at the end of the program how to reserve your seat and save the date. My co-presenter, Jill, has kindly agreed to be our guest today and she will whet your appetite for some enchanted evening by telling us a little about her journey to Skin Trust and what it has to offer. Welcome, Jill. Thank you, Eileen. Wonderful being here. Yes, we're delighted to have you. And why don't you start by telling us a little bit about you and your journey and how you came to be the owner of Skin Trust? Well, I would love to do that. And let me just say, I'm so excited about our evening because it's really, skincare is my number one passion, but fashion is my second passion. And it's gonna be so wonderful being able to talk with, with women about that. My journey, um, well, I guess I would start out with that I left corporate America 10 years ago because I loved what I did, but it wasn't my passion. Skin care is my passion. It started with my mother. Years ago, we would play with different skin care. She would put lotions and potions together and we would try different things. And I read a lot about skin care. But then I got to the point I said to myself, but what's good? How do I know of all those products out there? How do I know what's good? And I thought the only way I'm gonna know that is to really go back to school and to educate myself and learn. So that's when I started on the journey and found out what an esthetician was and left corporate America, went back to school, and I always had the dream and the goal of having my own business. And so five years ago, I opened the doors of Skin Trust here in Palos Heights. Oh, beautiful. And what is an esthetician? And is it similar to a dermatologist? It sounds similar. It does. And, you know, many times people, they know dermatologists, but they don't know esthetician. But also many times an esthetician will work with a dermatologist. But the difference is an esthetician is about caring for your skin. We don't diagnose but we will treat your skin. We help you understand product formulations, what ingredients should you use on your skin based on whatever your concerns are, what treatments should you have on your skin. So we're really health, health skin care coaches. And I do a lot of work with helping people just understand what should I use every day on my skin? How do I understand all those products out there? Very similar to why I became an esthetician. I didn't understand it. I loved it, but I thought, well, is this $50 product better than this $10 product? Yes, we all wonder. And we all wonder, but who has the time? Well, that's my work. 
And so I do that. And I many a times would just help people understand what should you do every day because that's so important. You touch your skin twice a day, mm -hmm. 365 days a year. That's a lot of care. Yes. And you want to make sure that you're using the very best ingredients on your skin. Beautiful. And do you have a particular specialty as an esthetician? I do, and you'll find that various estheticians will have specialties. I can treat any skin condition, and that may be discoloration, acne or breakout prone skin. Um, it could be um, aging skin, which is really what I specialize in, or perhaps rosacea. But I specialize in youthful aging because uh -huh. I'm aging. And I want to maintain my youth in the very best way possible, but really more importantly is people want to age differently. People don't really want to age like our grandparents. Yes. We want to maintain that vitality in both our movement, our bodies, our appearance. So I love to work with people who really want their skin to look good as they go through the aging process. Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect, but it means it's healthy and it has a youthful glow about it and it really looks good and there's so many wonderful things you can do with your skin. And it sounds like Jill we're not and I think me and most of our audience re this resonates we want to look great we want to look vibrant we're not trying to look young no. we want to look terrific and we, as we age. We want to look the best we can for where we're, where we're at in our life Beautiful. and I think that's really what we want to and you know we're we're active longer we're working longer so we want to maintain the vitality so I love working with them and a lot of times I will get people that will come in and say you know, I haven't taken time for myself. I've been involved with my family. I really want to care for my skin now. What should I do? Mm. And this resonates with our caregivers. The focus of where the road rises is really often caregivers and what they go through as they care for their seniors, their children, their spouses. Yes. So this, you're ultimately helping maybe the caregiver as well as the Absolutely. senior take care of themselves. Yeah, and really, it's when skincare becomes important to someone. And I just, you know, there's, there's just certain trends that I see in the business. And so often a woman has really cared for her family, taking care of them, and all of a sudden she's saying, I want to take care of myself. I do get a lot of people to that right before an event, a lot of mothers of the bride or groom, ah. and they're like, I want to look my best for this event. So we have programs mm -hmm. that we can and really help them feel wonderful and look their best at that event. And it is easy if when you're not in the business to get a little out of date. I've heard the adage that if you're looking for a lipstick or a cream that is no longer manufactured, it's probably out of style. So you stay up with the trends so that we don't have to. I do. And you know, you hit on it. Makeup is another wonderful aspect of it because as we grow a little older our skin changes we have all kinds of hormonal changes happening and you want to wear a makeup that's a finishing touch that's an extension of your skin care it has good ingredients in it nothing bad in it but it gives you a soft focus it doesn't have talc in it it doesn't cake in fine lines but it gives you a wonder wonderful um, appearance that's and nice. that's what i focus and i do carry a line of makeup it's not my own it's a it's a brand that's out on the marketplace but it is fabulous for our skin well it sounds like that leads right to your power of five you <gasps> present on you're going to speak in october about yeah um, you practice the power of five so why didn't you tell our viewers all about it i will you know it it was a it was an evolution of skin trust uh, what i wanted to do is build a business and a practice that would give people options and they would give people options and say an example would be fine lines around your eyes some people will do Botox, and we offer Botox, but some people don't. They want to do something else. So we may um, suggest we'll do a toxiline, which is an intraceuticals treatment that's very natural. But it's an example of how do we give people options. And then I feel that you can have youthful aging by choosing components of the power of five. So. The first component is what ingredients do you use on your skin? There are wonderful ingredients. There's generations of ingredients. Skin care has become very sophisticated. What are you using every day, as I mentioned earlier? What kind of facial treatments do you receive to really help slow down the aging process, treat a specific condition? What are advanced treatments? Those advanced treatments may be Botox, it might be a filler, it might be Thermosmooth, which is radio frequency that's used to minimize fine lines. It might be makeup, as we just talked about, or supplements, because it really is inside out. 
It's mm -hmm. both. So those are the five components of the power of five, giving people options within those and choosing whatever component you're comfortable with to help you. And let me ask you a question. There's some gorgeous trends in makeup now, including the beautiful shiny highlights. Does one really have to obey a decade or age code, or can you just pick something you like at the makeup counter and wear it as long as it makes you good, whether it's age appropriate or not? I think you can have fun with it. Yeah. And if there's something that you love, wear it. If it makes you feel good, wear it. I'm much more about what makes you comfortable versus trends. Yes. There's always trends. There's trends in fashion, there's trends in makeup. But I'm more what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel good. One thing I noticed is women don't like to wear a lot of color, and especially as they age. And I think using the right color, whether it's in your dress or whether it's in your makeup, can really keep a vibrancy in you. That may not be on trend, but it may be beautiful on you. Yes, and prevent the invisibility. I've often heard women say that menopause and beyond, they become invisible. I know. I've also heard there's a conspiracy with all the creams and fawns and wheats that there is a conspiracy to make women invisible. So you're saying, no, use no. color. Do not go gently. Do not go gently. Into retirement. Do not. And there's wonderful things you can do and feel very comfortable with it. It doesn't mean you have to wear the most vibrant red out there, but if you want to, go for it. But there's such a, and the makeup companies are wonderful in terms of what they offer. And I think you need to pick and choose and be comfortable, but we help people with that. And Jill, you mentioned dress. You mentioned the colors that you wear, not just skincare. And you have a second passion, and that is? <gasps> Fashion. Because so, I, I, go ahead, sorry. Tell us a little about it. Well, I really believe that fashion defines style and style defines you. And it's not about trends. It's not about wearing the most up to date. It's about wearing what is comfortable for you. What defines you? What's your style? Are you classic? Are you feminine? Are you natural? And that is, how do you just, how are you bold with that style? Because first impressions are lasting impressions. Mm. Fashion is a language. People will look at you, then they look at your face before they even talk to you. So they're forming an impression. Mm -hmm. And what impression are you conveying? Mm. And it's about style and being comfortable in that style. And it's not about necessarily spending a lot of money. There's certainly wonderful things you can buy, but it's about being creative with what you have and then bringing in accent pieces that really define your style. Oh, I love that. And as you said earlier, we're working longer. We often have second and third Absolutely. acts after we do retire. So we do still want to make a positive impression. Impression. We're going to get out there, we're going to sit on boards, we're going to support charities. We still want to make that impression. Absolutely. We still want to be noticed in the world as we do some good. So the right skin care, the right color, yes. the right image, the right fashion, it's absolutely important. And, and I it, love what you do, Jill. Thank you, and I love it because I want people to feel good. It is about building confidence and having people feel good. You know, and it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what your body shape is. There are so many things you can do for anyone to feel good. And you know, we've been talking a lot about women and I don't want to leave men out of this equation. More and more men are getting involved in skincare too because ah. they also want to age nicely. Mm -hmm. And there's wonderful things you can do. They are very different from women in terms of their skincare needs, but they also are very concerned about how they're aging and the statistics prove that they're getting much more involved in services. Beautiful. So what would be one defining difference between a man's skincare and a woman's? Well, one defining difference is a shave. Ah, of course. And it's how do they treat that shaving process. And many have, ah. have irritation, they have trouble with ingrown hairs. So there's tips about how to really shave appropriately. There's products to use to help them. They also tend to have a little bit more oil in their skin. Ah. They tend to have deeper pores in women. Um, they don't like to use maybe all that we like to use on our skin. So yeah. their regimen would be different. Right, that sounds terrific. Now, why don't you tell the viewers, Jill, if they want to get a hold of you before our October event, how to reach you? They can reach me by calling 708-541-9191 or emailing me at jill at skintrust.net or you can contact us on our website, www.skintrust.net. That sounds terrific. So remember, viewers, you can come meet Jill and I in person October 17th 
15th Trinity College. You can call my office. You know how to contact me for any pr further details on the event, and we would love to see you there. So thank you, Jill, for joining us. Thank you us. so much for having me, and I'm very excited about our evening. Thank you, viewers, for watching, and we will see you next time on Where the Road Rises.